Armed forces of Ukraine launched the largest artillery strikes on Donetsk since the beginning of the war. Ukraine destroyed many positions, outposts, and military equipment of Russian army. Military facilities belonging to Russian army were destroyed one by one. Numerous explosions occurred in the area. It was also announced that Russian army carried out missile attacks on the Tokmak military airbase. Igor Grykin warned the Russian authorities. Grykin said that Ukrainian army is getting stronger day by day and that it needs to be intervened very quickly. A record number of long-range artillery systems from Western countries were delivered to Ukrainian army. The number of casualties of Russian army exceeded 93,000. In the morning, Ukrainian army began major operations. Ukrainian forces held artillery fire on Avdiivka and Bakhmut districts, which lasted about eight hours. It was announced that the Russian forces on the Eastern Front had withdrawn after artillery fire. Ukrainian army is expected to launch a very comprehensive ground operation in the Donetsk region. Russian media acknowledged the attacks and announced that Russian army had suffered many casualties in the Donetsk region. Ukrainian General Starf announced that Russian army lost 310 soldiers on the Eastern Front in just one day. In addition, eight Russian ammunition depots in the region were destroyed. Russian army entered a period of partial preparation to begin operations. For this reason, Ukrainian army wants to disrupt the preparation process of Russian army by carrying out intense artillery and rocket attacks. Tokmak, where Russian Air Force's military airspace is located, was attacked by missiles by Ukrainian armed forces. A few hours ago, Tokmak, where the military airspace of Russian Air Force is located, was attacked by missiles by Ukrainian army. The attack was carried out using unidentified missile weapons. The statements made were confirmed by Russian armed forces. According to the information provided by Russian military journalists, the attacks fell on Tokmak, where there is an airspace used by Russian army. It was stated that an ammunition depot exploded after a large explosion sound was heard in the area as a result of the attack. After this process, Ukrainian army is expected to carry out simultaneous operations in the Saporoz High, Donetsk and Luhansk regions. Igor Gherkin warned the Kremlin government and Russian armed forces after the operations. Gherkin continues to support Ukrainian army by Western countries. Currently, the military inventory of armed forces of Ukraine is quite strong and modern. Ukrainian soldiers are well trained. Supply and logistics support continues to be provided to Kiev. The ammunition of Ukrainian army destroys targets 70 to 80 kilometers away with a very small margin of deviation. In addition, Ukrainian army has thousands of artillery shells in its inventory. He said that in the future, the number of attacks by Ukrainian artillery units will increase. The support of Western countries is very important in this process. Russian authorities are quite uncomfortable with the systems sent to Ukraine. The successful operations of the Ukrainian army caused great concern to the Russian authorities. In addition, Russian-backed groups began to leave the fronts. The leader of the Russian-backed group says Ukrainian army is not running out of ammo and equipment. We have been fighting non-stop for 32 hours in the Donetsk region with the Russian-backed so-called leader Ukrainian army. As a result of the attacks carried out so far, many Ukrainian armored vehicles have been destroyed. However, Ukrainian army continues to come to the Eastern Front with new armored vehicles and tanks. Ukrainian forces carry out constant artillery and rocket attacks. Our defense lines are constantly being destroyed and we are creating new positions. More shipments are required to the Donetsk region. In the Bakhmut and Avdiivka regions, the intensity of the fighting has increased considerably. We need to bring more soldiers and ammunition to the front so that we can stay in the region, he said. The violence of the conflict in Luhansk is increasing day by day. Ukrainian armed forces have made slow but great progress on this front line. In this process, Luhansk Governor Siri Hayde made important statements about the region. Hayde, at the end of winter, at the beginning of the war, we want to get our lands back. We think we can liberate the whole of Ukraine at the beginning of 2023, he said. Hey day, we do not know how many soldiers and military equipment Russia has sent to the front. Our enemies act quite wisely. However, 
Ukrainian army is much more experienced and morale higher than Russian forces. It is clear that the soldiers of the Russian army, which he sent to the front with mobilization, are quite inexperienced. This allows our soldiers to make great progress, he said. It is also known that the Svatov Kremina front line is very important for the two countries. As it is known, if a control is achieved in this region, the logistics of Russian soldiers towards the front will come to an end. Because there are very critical supply routes on this front line, Russian army was providing logistic support between the eastern and southern fronts by using the supply routes in the region. In addition, this region has a key position. That's why Ukrainian army wants to take full control of the R-66 road and its surroundings. About 10 days ago, Ukrainian forces took action to take control of R-66 highway in the region. Currently, 60% of the area and most of the R-66 highway is under the control of the Ukrainian army. Russian military wants to regain control of the R-66 highway by increasing its shipments in the region. However, as a result of the successful operations of the Ukrainian army, Russian army's shipments on the R-66 highway were stopped. For this reason, shipments between the eastern and southern fronts came to a near standstill. It was also observed that the successful operations of Ukrainian army and Russian media published contradictory reports against the Kremlin and Russian armed forces. Russian media, senior officials and Russian politicians began to react very harshly to Putin's administration. As a result of the defeats of Russian army, problems officially broke out in the Kremlin. On the other hand, Ukrainian army uses kamikaze drones to destroy the Russian front line and military equipment. These kamikaze drones have very simple technology, but Russian air defense systems in the region often cannot detect these kamikaze drones. These kamikaze drones travel very close to the ground surface. We know that the radar systems of the Russian army were weak as a result of the attacks. Presumably, these kamikaze drones fly close to the ground surface, evading Russian radars. More details are coming to light about the make and model of Ukrainian drones that attacked vital Russian air bases inside the country's borders on December 5th. Unmanned aerial vehicles that have carried out attacks recently are not as technological and advanced systems as Bayraktar TB2s sent by Turkey. Instead, the drones used were observed to be remnants of Soviet-era drones that had previously been used as photo reconnaissance tools during the Cold War. Ukraine turned the Tupolev Tu-141 into a fighter jet that dropped bombs on Russian Air Force facilities hundreds of kilometers from Russia. Ukraine turned the Tu-141 into an unmanned bomber using its own defense industry, and the old drone unexpectedly dealt a heavy blow to Russian army. This conversion should not be seen as just an obsolete and discarded drone. The ingenious additions of Ukrainian engineers allowed these drones to advance hundreds of kilometers without being cart by Russian air defense systems. The stride acts as a winged missile or cruise missile. It is powered by a Tumansky K-17 engine with 4,409 pounds of thrust. This unmanned aerial vehicle receives its initial thrust from the launcher with a solid fuel booster. Kamikaze aid drone can travel at 600 miles per hour. As a result of the shipments, the tension between Ukraine and Russia increased considerably. The intensity of the war on the front is increasing day by day. We have come to the end of another video. We will continue to report the events in the coming hours to you quickly and accurately. We continue to inform you objectively about the events.